Welcome into this video where we're going to look at the eight reasons you probably suck at customer service without even realizing. Hopefully. Hopefully you do understand that some of these are very, very bad and they shouldn't be done. But what are these eight things that I'm going over? And why am I not even just teaching you eight reasons to be great at customer service? All in good time. All in good time. That's coming. <laughs> But before that, if you like updating yourself rather than your mobile phone all of the time, then you are in the right place. Because right here on this channel, we do self-development, personal learning and motivation. So consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification so you get updated when I upload. It's that simple. So let's start. Eight reasons you probably suck at customer service. Reason number one, you might suck at customer service. Quite simply, you're rude, boy or girl whoever's watching so you could be being rude and you don't even realize it and what do i mean by this well quite simply let's imagine you're working in a shop or a store and a customer walks in and they just go to the first aisle in front of you so you carry on talking to your colleague now you're talking about what you did last night linking up on i don't know final fantasy or battlegrounds or whatever the games are you guys are playing now i don't know but Let's imagine that customer's gone to the first aisle in front of you. They're just browsing a certain section. So you carry on talking, you're having a conversation, you're having a laugh and a joke. You're being rude and you don't even realise it. See, what you don't understand is that customer might want to approach you, but they're not going to because they feel intimidated by the fact that you're talking to another colleague. So they don't want to interrupt. So instead, they just walk out the store. Now, if that continues and you don't know you're being rude and that plays actually a major part in customer interaction, you could lose a number of customers, which means the business could lose a number of sales and you could lose your job and nobody wants that. So these little things you need to play a part in and make a conscious effort to not be rude. Rudeness isn't just giving someone a dirty look. It's not just swearing at somebody. We're gonna talk about that later. You could be being rude and not even realize it. So when you're working, the minute a customer is in store, the minute you have somebody on the phone, because even if you're working in a contact center, you can still be rude. If you're dealing with a customer on the phone and you're trying to listen in to a conversation that's happening in the background or a conversation that you was part of before you took that important call from a customer, I'll say it again, from a customer, you need to tune into that customer. They will be fully aware if you're not listening to them. Hmm, listening. Something else we're going to talk about later. But they will be fully tuned into you, so you need to be tuned into them. And if you're not listening because you're too busy fussing about a conversation that's going on in the background, you're being rude. So number one, don't be rude. Reason number two, you could be sucking at customer service and you don't even know about it. Eating. I mean, not in general. That would be silly. You can eat. Of course you can. You're a human being. I love food. Spare ribs and sweet corn. Oh, yeah. But eating, whether you are on a phone call to a customer or face to face, it's even worse, you shouldn't eat. Even if you are in a contact center and you are allowed to eat at your desks or your pods or whatever your little terminals are called, you shouldn't be eating. A customer can hear it on the call and it is unprofessional. It's not good. And no customer wants chips or crisps, depending on if you're from the States or the UK. Comment below, let me know. Let me see who's watching this video. How, how far is this video stretched? But nobody wants to hear somebody crunching on a call. You've got to speed eat. You have to speed. If you're allowed to eat in a contact call center, you've got to speed eat. Let me show you how to do it. Hello, Ben speaking. How can I help? It's that simple. Never eat in front of a customer because it is rude. Even if they are somewhere in the shop somewhere, put that cheeseburger under the desk. Put it away. Wait till they've gone. Reason number three you could suck at customer service is you're just not listening. Did you hear me? Oi. Oi. When I say listen, I mean listen actively. Well, how, what is listening actively? Let me explain. Listening actively is actually listening to the customer. Paying attention. Fully tuned in. Good. You're getting it. You're getting it. Listening basically means you need to make sure that if a customer was to ask you a question about what they've just explained to you, you can answer it. You need to listen actively. Active listening is a major factor. So big, I'm probably going to do a video on it. 
yeah, I'll do a video on active listening. So, so stay tuned for that. Hit that, hit the bell notification and be updated. Let's do it. Oh yeah, I'll do that. We'll do an active listening video. But you need to pay attention to the customer. If you're listening to the customer, you're going to be able to help them or solve their problem more effectively. So make sure you are listening. Otherwise, you suck. Reason four, you're getting angry. Under no circumstances working in customer service should you get angry. It's just not the professional or right thing to do. <laughs> no customer should affect you that bad that you get angry towards them. <sighs> Deep breaths. Stay cool, stay calm, stay collected. You're a professional. You can do this. Never ever get angry. If you get angry at a customer, you need to take yourself off the shop floor or put yourself on a do not disturb function and take a little breather because under no circumstances should you allow a customer to make you angry. If you're getting angry, you're sucking and nobody wants that. Have five reasons why you suck. Number five, over familiarity. Now that is a gray area. You can be familiar with a customer if they are being familiar with you. What do I mean? Well, quite simply put, is if a customer is calling you mate, buddy, or pal, they prefer to communicate in that style of fashion. It is, it's simple. If somebody's saying mate, buddy, or pal, then you could use that style of communication back to them. You need to mirror the customer, mirror their tone, their pitch, their voice, the way they're communicating, the, the way they're putting themselves across. Never, never mirror an angry customer. You don't get angry with a customer. Remember tip four? Yeah. Never get angry with a customer, ever. Over familiarity, however, is a gray area. It can be great customer service being familiar or it can be really bad customer service being over familiar. You need to read the customer. So if they are saying buddy or pal or mate and you're comfortable communicating like that, then do it. Even if your manager or your team leader or your managing director says, that, that's bad, that's unprofessional. Tell him it ain't. Tell him to to send me an email, ben at purplelionetraining.co.uk and I'll visit them. I'll, co I'll come in and tell them. Tell them Ben sent you. Yeah, because it isn't bad customer service. No. What is bad customer service when it comes to over-familiarity is if somebody's being very to the point, I'd like to purchase this item, please, and they are refraining from using the mates, the buddies, the pals, the, the casual, loose communication, if you will, then I wouldn't suggest calling that person mate, buddy or pal. Sir, madam, or their first name if you've obtained that. That's professional enough. I would stay away from the mates, the buddies and the pals. The main reason for that is because that could be seen as over familiar with a customer that doesn't communicate like that. So quite simply, read your customers and mirror them. Reason six, you suck at customer service if you ignore your customers. You do not understand how many people do this. From every industry from travel through to retail i see people ignoring their customers i am a massive fan of customer service i wouldn't be teaching these courses if i wasn't don't ignore your customer if somebody walks into your store your shop approach them it's not pushy hi if you need anything i'll be just over there or hi can i help you today if they don't need any help they say no thank you but they know where you are if you approach them. They know the offer's there. If the phone's ringing, you work in a contact or call center or an office, don't let it ring and ring and ring and ring in the hope that they'll hang up. Answer it. Try to help that customer. Remember, you are a customer of someone. Whether it's a gym or an internet provider or your favorite restaurant, you are a customer of someone and you would not like to be ignored as a customer. So don't do it to the people that you're serving. It's part of customer service. Number seven, don't swear ever, period. If you work in customer service, under no circumstances should you ever swear in front of a customer. I mean, ever, forever, ever, 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 yeah, ever, should you swear. It is the most unprofessional, disrespectful thing you can do working in customer services. Well, one of, there is some pretty bad stuff you could do but don't swear. No matter how familiar, no matter how well you know the customer, no matter what your rapport with that customer, never swear. It is a bad, bad, bad thing to do. Don't even let the odd F-bomb drop out in conversation. It is bad. Trust me, no matter how well you know that customer, they'll think about it, they'll know about it, 
and they won't they won't like it trust me it is a bad form of customer service don't do it or you suck four plus four is eight i always go to kind of big shack references i don't know why quick math reason eight false promises you promise but you just don't deliver <coughs> false promises are a major negative form of customer service if you say to a customer you're going to do something make sure you do it if you promise a customer that you'll get back to them on wednesday and it gets to wednesday and you haven't got an update on their order or their issue or their complaint ring the customer let them know trust me when i say that they would prefer to hear you say you're still waiting on an update or you're still waiting on something to be able to provide them with the information they want than if you don't ring them at all if you tell a customer you're going to ring them on Wednesday and Wednesday gets there and you do not have an update on something and you think, no, I'll just wait. I'll wait until I've got that update for them. And you ring them a week later, that is bad customer service. You suck in the lowest form of customer service if that is what you're doing. Never make false promises. See, false promises are a bad thing. We need to manage our customers' expectations. So make sure you are. If you say you're going to do something, do it. So there you have eight reasons why you suck at customer service, but hopefully not anymore now that I've made you aware of them. Have I missed any? If I have, put them in the comments below. I'll be interested to find out what I've missed or what you view as bad customer service when you're a customer of somebody. It's just as important because we are all customers of someone. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe because I have plenty more educational videos with a difference coming your way. See you in the next one.